Well, we're so glad that you've joined us today. And maybe, maybe actually it's not today that you're joining us. Maybe you're camping today and you're joining us Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. It doesn't really matter. We've had an opportunity to worship, and now we have a great opportunity to look into God's Word. If you could sit down with anybody and have a conversation, who would you pick? I mean, think about that. If you could sit down with absolutely anybody and talk, who would it be? The Queen? Um, Tom Brady? The Prime Minister? Man, if you could sit down with the Prime Minister, you could, you could say to him, what were you thinking giving all that money away? Or maybe it would be Chris Tomlin. Or maybe somebody from the past. I mean, if we just open it up like that, who would you pick? Mother Teresa? Maybe someone that you've loved that's gone on and you wish you could just have one more conversation with them. I talked to somebody earlier today who said, if I could talk to anybody, I'd sit down with Deborah. And I said, who's Deborah? And they said, Deborah, you know, Deborah from the Old Testament. I'd love to ask her what it was like to lead in a culture dominated by men. But just think about that. If you could talk to anybody, who would you pick? What if you could have a conversation with God? What would you say to God? What would you talk about? How would you talk to God? Well, you know, over the next five weeks, what we're going to do here at Crossroads is we're going to talk about talking to God. Talk about talking to God. Or, as it's commonly known as, prayer. We're going to work through this for the next five weeks. Now, there's a lot of ways we could go on this. And it was kind of a challenge for me to figure out how we wanted to go on this. Do we talk about the Lord's Prayer? Because when his disciples said, teach us to pray, that's where he took them. Or do we talk about people in the Bible that were great prayers? Or do we talk about all the different kinds of prayer? There's worship, there's confession, there's petition or asking God, there's intercession. I mean, where do you go? And as I wrestled with that, I thought, you know where we're going to go? I just want to teach you what I've learned about prayer. That's it. I can't take you further than I've actually gone myself. And just a heads up and full disclosure, I'm a beginner in this whole matter of prayer, just a beginner. But I do pray, and I do talk to God, and I do hear from God, and I'd like to share some things that I've learned along the way with you. So if you're kind of a big dog prayer, um, you might think this is rather elementary. But if you're a big dog prayer, I'm not worried about you because you, you pray anyway, and you'll just keep on praying. Um, I want to talk to people that don't pray much at all, or maybe feel guilty because they don't pray. We're going to talk about um, how to get started. And when I'm talking about prayer, I'm talking about Christian prayer in the name of Jesus. Talking to God in the name of Jesus. My goal really is that we'd all begin to pray. Because I suspect, truth be known, most Christians don't pray. I mean, we talk about it. We say we should. We feel guilty about it. But by and large, we don't pray. And so I hope one of my goals is we would just start praying. Wherever you are, you'd start praying. If you're a beginner, there'll be lots here for you. If you're a, a big dog prayer, um, I think you'll learn something along the way too. Uh, it'll be fun to go through this little five-week series called Talking to God. You know, I, I grew up in a home where, um, where prayer was an integral part of the normal Christian life. And also in our church, we, in our church, we prayed. That's, that's what we did. We just prayed. And so um, normal praying in my home was saying grace for your meal. I mean, we always did that. At breakfast, uh, lunch, supper, we prayed. It was always my dad that prayed. And his prayer was always serious, sincere, and familiar. And that's just the way we were raised. You know, when he was an old man, he got dementia, and he was up in Killam, and uh, he lived, uh, we stayed in a hospital up there at the end, but you could go and visit him, and he'd, he'd know you, but he didn't know what he had for breakfast, and there was a lot he didn't know. He probably didn't know where he was half the time, but um, you could, he could go out for a meal. So on one occasion, we took him out to my sister Marilyn's house, Marilyn and her husband Randy. They're farmers up at Killam. And we took my dad out um, to their house for a meal. And, you know, we're all sitting at the table, and Randy, my brother-in-law, said, just as we're about to get, begin, Bob, that was my dad, Bob, why don't you pray? And he just bowed his head, and he said, Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this food and your many, many blessings. Please bless this to our body's use. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. It was serious. It was sincere. And it was familiar. Listen, here's a principle you ought to write down. Got a pen? I'm waiting. Get a pen. Okay, get your phone out. Here's the principle. What's down in the well will always come up in the bucket. What's down in the well will always come up in the bucket. What was down in his well? The word of God? He'd lost his mind by and large, but his spirit was still tracking with Jesus. And even in that state, he could pray a prayer that was serious, sincere, and familiar. You know, the Christian community that I grew up in, was raised in, they, they regarded prayer as integral to normal Christian living as well. And so um, every, every Wednesday night, we had a prayer meeting at church, and we would go, like everybody would go. We didn't have kids programs and adults. We just all went as a family to prayer meeting. And we'd sit around. It was probably been an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, um, 45 minutes if we were lucky as kids. And, and uh, they'd share prayer requests, and then they'd pray. I don't know if I ever prayed there. So I was trying to get Terry Reimer's attention, but maybe I prayed once or twice. But what I did learn, what I did learn was that prayer is integral to normal Christian living. So if I was going to follow Jesus, it meant I would pray. You know, after a while, the prayer meeting changed a little bit. We had, it was called Bible study and prayer meeting. So we had a Bible study and then we had a prayer meeting. As things um, evolved, uh, wrong word in this context, morphed over time, um, in the Christian community, large Christian community, um, those meetings were replaced with home fellowship groups or what we called in those days life groups, and it moved into the home. But the emphasis was on fellowship. And we actually developed some fairly decent relationships, but by and large, we stopped knowing the Bible and we stopped praying. And I guess one of my goals in this series is, is that we would restore the importance of prayer and see it as integral to normal Christian living. Um, we fellowship today, and we worship with music, and we serve, but by and large, we've stopped knowing the Bible, and we stopped praying. And I, I want to bring those two things back on the table. This series will be about prayer, about talking to God. Now, when, when it comes to prayer, you got to know that um, we need help. I mean, it, you know, people say, well, why, are you gonna, why are you teaching on prayer? Why don't you just pray? Be, because prayer is a learned activity. Um, that's why the disciples said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And I've had some tremendous mentors along the way. And I just want to show you on the screen some, some writers that have really mentored me in this matter of prayer. Um, you'll see five books up there. There's one by Richard Foster on prayer. Uh, another one by uh, Paul Miller on a praying life. Uh, Tim Keller wrote a great book on prayer, and then The Transforming Friendship by James Houston, and um, Cry for the Kingdom by Stanley Grants. These, these people have mentored me in my walk. Now, if you said to me, um, I can only read um, one of those books, which would it be? Um, it, would, it would be for sure The Transforming Friendship by Dr. Houston. I know him personally. I know he not only writes about prayer, but I know he prays. Um, it, it, they're all really, really good. If you said what, if you could only read two, what would they be? They would be The Transforming Friendship and Cry for the Kingdom. Those would be the two that I would pick um, as books that I would um, help um, guide me along this well-worn path of seeking the Father's heart in the name of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. So that's, that's where I would go if I was looking for mentors. In fact, it's where I've gone. Um, the Transforming Friendship, I'm on about my fourth time through it. So these books will repay good reading and um, good study. Now, let me give you um, where we're going in this series and four words that basically anchor my understanding of prayer. Four words that anchor my understanding of prayer. First one is invitation. That's what we'll talk about today. The second word is the word relationship. Um, prayer is about a relationship. Third word uh, we'll look at the third week is the word confidence, and the fourth word is the word um, absence. Those four words will form the um, topics, I guess, if you, you would, as we walk through this little series. I'll tell you about the fifth week um, at the end as we uh, wrap up at the end today. Um, but today we're going to talk about this whole matter of invitation, because for me, that's where prayer starts. Um, what can we say about prayer? I mean, when we, we say prayer, we say talking to God. What can we say about it? Let me give you three or four things that, to think about 
when we talk about prayer. Prayer is, first of all, it's direct communication with God. Just direct communication with God. It's talking to the God in whose presence we live and move and have our being. Um, Commonly, communication goes two ways, talking and listening. So when we talk about direct communication with God, we're talking about talking to God and listening to God. In this series, I'm just talking about talking to God because uh, not that long ago, we did a series on listening to God, which would be the other side of this coin. But I think it's worthwhile focusing for five weeks just on this matter of talking to God. As a follower of Jesus, you need to know you can go directly to him in Jesus' name. You can go directly to God. You don't need to go through me or some other pastor or a priest or anybody else. You can go directly to God in Jesus' name. I think of Hebrews chapter 4, and I'll just read this verse too. It's a great, great couple of verses here in Hebrews chapter 4 about this point. It says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who's gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who's been tempted in every way just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Um, Let us approach God directly in Jesus name. That's really important that you understand that. Here's another thing about prayer. Prayer is um, actually, it's keeping company with God. It's keeping company with God. Um, Prayer is about a relationship, about a friendship. And we'll dig into that a bit more next week. But prayer essentially is keeping company with God. Um, when you see it actually more as friendship than as some um, rigorous duty or obligation that we have to do, um, it births desire in you. You, you, you. you have this sense of, you know, I get to be in the presence of the Father. I get to develop a relationship, a friendship with him. And that, that puts it in a whole different context than just this thing I have to do every day. And once I check that off, I can move on to the next thing. Another thing about prayer, it wakes us up to what God is doing all the time, everywhere around us. Prayer is a way of opening our eyes so that we see what he's actually doing in our real worlds. And um, that's cool because when you see it, it's also an invitation to participate in it. So prayer opens your eyes to see what God is actually doing. And with that is an invitation to participate with God and what he's actually doing in your world, whether it's your family, whether it's your neighborhood, your workplace, or whatever it is. Um, God's at work all the time. We just don't see it because we don't spend much time in his presence. Prayer is also the key, the key to um, everything that we need to do and be in life. It's the key to everything that we need to do and be in life. God is everything that you need, everything for a rich, satisfying, fulfilled, purposeful life. And the good news about God is he's extremely generous. And he loves to give. And prayer um, is, is what unlocks that for you. Uh, one of the basic rules of the kingdom of God, you know what it is? One of the basic rules in the kingdom of God is ask. Just ask. I mean, if, if you don't get that straight, you'll miss out on so much that God has for you. But that's the basic rule of living in God's kingdom. It's ask. Those that ask, receive. Those that seek, find. Those that knock, They have the door opened wide to them. So um, if that's all true, and I suggest you it is, why do we find it so hard to pray? Why do we find it so hard to talk to God? I think there's a multitude of reasons, lots of them. But I want to give you three that I think are especially relevant in the culture in which we live, which which makes it very difficult to talk to God. Um, So here they are. Number one, It's difficult to talk to God because many people are without friends. Many people today are lonely and they do not have friends. And there's a clear connection uh, between our need for richer human relationships and our need for intimacy with God. If we find it hard to form lasting friendships with people that we can see, then we'll find it very difficult indeed to develop any kind of relationship in depth with a God that we cannot see. Our woundedness. Um, arises almost without exception from poor, inadequate relationships with people. Um, If you have a hard time 
forming deep relationships with people, you have a very difficult time talking to God. But the other side of that coin is if you talk to God and develop a deep relationship with him, those people, they're always people that can develop deep relationships with the people around them. Um, then another reason it's difficult to pray in our culture is we are by and large outward people. We're outward people. We're obsessed with image. We're obsessed with how we look. We're obsessed with our appearance. So we go to the gym, we exercise, we work out, we diet because it's all about what we look like. And we live in that kind of outward world. And it's, it's, it's all about our obsession with achievement. I mean, we live in a world where achievement is everything. Making a name for ourselves, making the numbers, making the statistics. I mean, we, we worry about that all the time. And you know this, check this out. Take a concordance sometime and look up the word achievement in the Bible. How many times do you think it occurs there? Zero. You will not find the word achievement in the Bible. You know what the Bible's obsessed with? God's achievements. Not mine, but God's achievements. And um, unless I'm drawn into that world and look through that lens, I will miss so much. But we're such outward people. Um, that, that's, that's very difficult to pray when your life is about what's on the outside because God's actually very concerned about what's on the inside. Do you remember this famous verse? It's, um, where is it? First Samuel chapter 16. Um, Samuel's gone to anoint a new king, David. And, and he, he, he goes to Jesse's house and Jesse brings all his boys by and, and um, none of them are fit to be a king in God's eyes. But in Samuel's eyes, they all make the cut. But then God says this to Samuel. Samuel, the Lord does not look at the things that man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord, he looks at the heart. And if you're going to pray, it's about the heart. It's about what's going on on the inside, not necessarily the outside. We're extremely pe uh, busy people. There's so much going on on the outside. Prayer will not make you less busy. You know what it'll do? It'll make your heart less busy. You might not be less busy, but your heart will be less busy if you spend time with the Father um, in Jesus' name. Here's, here's another thing that I think in our culture makes prayer very difficult is, um, well, we're afraid of really knowing ourselves. We're afraid of really knowing ourselves. I mean, truth be known, we walk around with a, with a mask on most of the time. But to come into the presence of the one who sees you and who knows you completely, that can be a scary moment. It's, it's to come in and have to take the mask off and actually be who you are. And some of us are just really afraid of finding out who we really are. I think some of us are afraid of uh, not only taking the mask off, but taking the mask off and finding out that we don't even have a face. That's why it's difficult to pray in our culture, because we got to be who we are, and that's scary in the presence of the holy. We're outward people, and um, many people don't have relationships of any depth with anybody, so how on earth do you do that with a God that you can't see? Well, here's the really good news. This is the good news. In spite of all our lack of prayer, our failure, our cover-up, our guilt, all that kind of stuff, we are invited to come to the Father. We are invited to come to the Father. Here's the invitation from Jesus. The Father's heart is wide open, and you are welcome to come in. You. Not just big dog prayers. Not just pastors. Not missionaries. Not just um, holy people. But you. Like, you are invited to come to the Father's heart. Jesus has opened the door wide. You know, Jesus, when he died on the cross, he removed every barrier and obstacle for you to come right to the Father. He did. Um, sin was in the way. Um, our failure, our guilt, um, you know, just name it. It's all there. But it, like when, when he died on the cross, he obliterated sin. He obliterated Satan. And he destroyed death. And that veil of the curtain, you might remember, if you know anything about the story, when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain that separated um, the holy place from the most holy place, the temple, the most holy place is where God's presence was. The curtain was there so that nobody would go in because if you went in, you would die. The high priest, he could go in once a year, but only, without, only with certain preparations. But when Jesus died, that curtain was torn from top to bottom, and it was God saying, 
Everybody is welcome to come in because of the work of my son, Jesus. You are welcome to come to the Father's heart. It is wide open. I, I love the way the invitation is written up in Matthew chapter 11. I'll just, I'll read that to you. It's beautiful verses. It goes like this. Jesus' words, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Like, look, Jesus, did you hear what he's saying? He says, come, come. The qualification is really, you got to be weary. you got to be worn out. you got to be tired of, you know, um, trying, to, trying to make it work and trying to follow Jesus and trying to be good. Just come as you are. The Father's heart is wide open. You say, well, that's Jesus. That's not the Father. Listen. You cannot be rightly related to one member of the Trinity and not all three of them. The words of one are the words of all three. When Jesus says, um, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, that's the Father's words too. So that's why I say the invitation is clear. You are welcome to come to the Father's heart. His arms are wide open. That's the really, really good news. Um, and that's where true prayer begins, actually. It begins with the Father's invitation to come. You might have thought that prayer began when you started talking to God, but the Father's invitation is always first, and our prayer is always the response. Listen, think about this. You could read it in, um, I think it's Psalm 14, mirrored in Psalm 53, that if God took his Holy Spirit away from us, if he just left, you and I wouldn't have another thought about God. We wouldn't seek him. We wouldn't think about praying. We wouldn't think about reading the Bible. We wouldn't think about worship. The very fact that you want to pray or you're thinking about prayer or you feel I should pray, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. His work is always previous to our work. He's the one that starts it. He's the one with the invitation. So when you pray, that should encourage you. Just as you start to pray, it, you're actually starting to pray because you've been invited to pray by the Father and you're actually responding to that invitation. Ultimately, prayer is not initiated by us but it's initiated by God, and uh, it starts in his heart because he longs to have you in his heart. Now, listen to this. I was, I was praying this morning, and I didn't feel like praying, and I had to confess some things that I didn't feel like confessing, and maybe you've been there. Probably not, but I'm probably a bigger sinner than you, so I had to, and I just thought that, man, God was just ready to slap me around, and I, I suddenly heard that inner voice of the Holy Spirit say, Dan, my anger has been turned away. My son paid your debt. You come. I can receive you. I can deal with your stuff. By the way, Dan, my, my, um, my heart longs for you. My heart yearns for you. I, uh, ju that just woke up in me, this strong desire just to come, just to be. I mean, it was just, um, it was a wonderful God moment in my life. And it just reminded me again of what I'm trying to say today is that, you know what? Um, Prayer starts with God. He initiates it. Why? Because he wants you to come. He wants relationship with you. He wants to hang out with you. That's a wonderful thing to think about. We're not left to ourselves. So where do we start in this whole matter of prayer? Just let's get practical for a minute. Where do we start? Let me give you two bits of counsel that maybe will help you start on this road of prayer. First one would be this. A good place to begin, very good place to begin, is with our woundedness with our woundedness, because that's what really keeps a lot of people from praying. They think, because of who I am and what I've done and what's happened, I could never come to God. And we're all wounded people, and we carry around this brokenness and woundedness. It's, it's put different ways in the Bible, for sure, but you know it, and I know it's true. I mean, there's a place where it says we have certain besetting sins, certain sins that um, they always take us out. And because they've always taken us out, they've created havoc. For some people, it's lust. It's sexual brokenness. And you know what? They just can never get free from it. It's like an elastic band. You, you know, they can do well for a little while, and then bang, they're lurched back into lust or adultery or pornography, and it just it's wrecked their lives. And some people's lives are being wrecked by it. Nobody else knows, but you know there's a, there's a deadness on the inside. Or it's anger for other people. Anger, just uncontrollable anger, and it's blown up relationships. And you just can't get away from it, or, or greed, or um, despair, or you, you name it. The list is endless, isn't it? Well, um, that's a very good place to begin when it comes to prayer. You begin with who you really are, because that's where the gospel begins. The gospel begins with 
who you really are. I mean, you come to him just like you are, all messed up, and he receives you. That's a wonderful thing. It's a scary thing to come like you are, but it's a wonderful thing too because Jesus loves real people. So you come to him with your woundedness and your brokenness. And um, that sad, confused child in me needs to experience the healing love of Jesus. We have to start there when it comes to prayer, I think. Um, discerning darkness in our lives should never drive us away from God. It should actually drive us to God. C.S. Lewis said, um, lay before him what is in us, not what ought to be in us. Lay before him what is in us, not what ought to be in us. Um, so here, here's what to do. If prayer is not a fixed habit for you and you don't normally pray, then perhaps what you could do is this. Just find a time, just any time, where you got a bit, a few minutes, and put all your energy into it. And I'd suggest this. Take Psalm 139 and read it and hear it as God's voice to you. And then take the end of it where it says, search me, O God, and know my heart, and just make, just pray it. Just say, God, you know my woundedness and my broke. Just search me. I, I can't get free of this. I can't get out of this. But can you lead me in the way everlasting? If you read Psalm 139 and just brought your real self to the real Jesus, you have no idea what that would birth in you. It would give you hope. It would give you desire. He'd give you counsel. You, you'd find yourself wanting to come back the next time, and you'd find more time for it. So don't beat yourself up because you don't pray. Don't beat yourself up because you don't start the day with prayer. Just find a time where you can pray and be. And that's where you begin. Bring your woundedness to him. Now, I'll give you another bit of counsel. And um, it would be this. Just, just come as a child. Just come as a child. Wasn't it Jesus that said you could call God Father? That must mean that I would come as a child if I can call him Father. Um, when children come to a father, how do they do it? How, how do they talk to their father? Well, they just use ordinary words and they just pour it all out. And it's interesting because in the New Testament, I found with very few exceptions, the biblical writers, the words they chose to describe prayer, they refer to prayer in words that were just the normal run-of-the-mill, Monday to Friday, everyday life kind of words, just the words of the street. That's what prayer was. It was just taking ordinary words and praying them, not fancy words. Not words that you think would impress God, just your ordinary, run-of-the-mill, everyday words. That's how the New Testament um, describes prayer. And that's how children actually pray. They just take ordinary words. Um, you know, I, I, um, we, have a, we have a prayer um, meeting Wednesday mornings here, here for men. And, and I call them like big dog prayers. And that's not a put-down term. That's, they just really are really big dog prayers. They're great. Um, and they pray great prayers. And they pray long prayers. And... Um, it, you know, I used to go, um, but because I'm a beginner, I, you know, I'm back in another session, but, um, it always started at this end with this guy and it worked down the table and it went around the corner the other way and they all prayed long prayers. And then afterwards we'd all go for coffee. Now I, I, um, I had a friend who I ran with clearly another life, but I ran with him and, and, um, he wasn't a believer at that time. And we we're talking about the church and I don't know how it came out. We just we talked about the fact that there's a group on Wednesday mornings that pray. And I knew we were doing a 10K and on the way back, he said, hey, I'd like to come next Wednesday morning. And my heart sunk. I thought, how can you come to our prayer meeting? You, you, you don't know Jesus. And like, these are really like big dog prayers. So it would be awkward. I tried to discourage him, but lo and behold, seven o'clock the next Wednesday morning, he showed up. And I thought, what am I going to do with this? And I thought, well, it usually starts at this end of the table, goes this way. So I'll sit right here at the far end and I'll put him beside me there so that when it comes to me, I'll pray a real quick brief prayer. I'll jump up and it'll be over. And he won't feel pressure to pray. And it went as planned all the way around. It came to me and I, I just prayed some um, dumbed down little prayer. Then I got up and, and then he started praying. He started pouring out his heart to God. He started sobbing. He started telling God about his brother who had a brain tumor. And his daddy was dying. And I just sat down and thought, oh my goodness. It was so moving. He said, amen. Then he jumped up and he said, hey, guys, where are we going for coffee? Um, it was so fun. Um, I think his prayer was maybe the most acceptable prayer that day around that table. You know why? It was just him. 
It was just ordinary words. He'd never prayed before, to my knowledge. But he just talked about the things that were on his heart. You say, well, how? <laughs> clearly that couldn't have been a prayer that God heard because he didn't know Jesus. Well, who says? Did Cornelius know Jesus when he prayed? Didn't God say his prayers and his giving had come up before God? Listen, if you're a sincere seeker and you pray to God, God will move heaven and earth to introduce you to Jesus. That's what he did for Cornelius. He said, Peter, Cornelius is praying and I love it and he's sincere. Go and tell him about Jesus. Now, my friend heard about Jesus shortly after that. Um, what I'm trying to say is that's the way kids pray. They, they just use ordinary, everyday language. And um, how, do they, how do they ask you? What do they ask about? They ask about everything and anything. And they ask repeatedly, just all the time. And they're just not afraid to ask. They're not afraid to ask. When you start praying, just use ordinary language and pray about anything and everything that's on your heart. And don't be afraid to ask for anything. That God can shape that. You know, I mean, my little grandson, Rain, his birthday last year, he, he said to his parents, do you mind if granddad buys me a present? And they said, why can't we buy you a present? He said, because granddad has more money than you. And so I um, took him out that day and we went shopping and I swallowed a few times when I saw what he wanted, but he got what he asked for because I love the kid. But if he just stayed home and asked his parents, he wouldn't have got half of what he, he just wasn't afraid to ask. That's how kids do it. So when you're learning to pray, just um, pray as a child. Just, you know, talk about anything and everything. I mean, do you remember Moses? There's a story about Moses where he's um, in the backside of the desert and he's not thinking about God or anything else. And he sees this bush that's burning, doesn't burn up. So he goes over to look at it. And God says to him, Moses, take your sandals off the place you're standing. It's holy ground. That's holy ground. Moses had no idea it was holy ground. You have no idea that your home is holy ground. Do you have any idea that your workplace is holy ground? That your, your neighborhood, it's holy ground. Like God's there. He's at work there. So talk to him about it. Talk to him about your home. Talk to him about your relationship. Talk to him about your job, your money, your fears, your anxieties. Just That's the way you start. You just start pouring it all out. I, I know that, you know, we should worship and we should do all, confess sin. And we, well, you know, God will help us with that. Just start praying. Because if you start, he'll work with that. What God wants from you is a conversational relationship. He just wants to talk to you. He wants to have a conversational relationship. Go met Moses for a minute. Um, when Moses died, his obituary was that nobody knew God face to face like Moses. You know what the word face to face implies? Conversational relationship. They talked face to face about the stuff that mattered to God and about the stuff that mattered to Moses. So start a conversation with God about what matters to you. Don't worry about people who have been Christians a long time or prayed a long time. You know, you're, you're a beginner, so, you know, pray that way. Just talk about the stuff that matters to you. I mean, a child, when he has a conversation with you, they don't talk about, like, the stock market and all that kind of stuff. They talk about what matters to them. Talk about what matters to you. That's where you start. I'm going to tell you one more grandkid story. Is that Okay. I just need one yes out there. Thank you. Okay, got it. My little granddaughter, Ayla, she loves to have a conversation with me. And it's just about all the stuff that matters to her. Um, not all the stuff that she didn't talk about this sermon or ask me how I was doing. But she sends me uh, messages on Messenger like all the time. And last week, what mattered to her was a new skill that she learned. So she said, Granddad, I just, I, I want to show you what I've learned. And then followed 36 seconds of her rolling her eyes every which way, just for 36 seconds. And a big smile, granddad, that's what I learned. Ah, that is so cool that she wants to talk to me about that. You might think that what you're talking to God about doesn't make any difference to him. He's running the unit. Listen, if it matters to you, it matters to him. Just start talking to him because he's inviting you to come into his presence and begin the conversation. So, um, if you start, he will do for you what he's done for so many people throughout history and even in our world today. He'll come close. He'll move mountains. He'll make a way when there doesn't seem to be a way just because 
you've come into his presence and begun to talk to him. Can I show you a prayer on the screen that might be a, a simple little prayer that's a great one to pray? Um, I love it. it was, I got it from Richard Foster. He says, Dear God, I, I'm so grateful for your invitation to enter your heart of love. As best as I can, I come in. Thank you for receiving me. Amen. Isn't that a great prayer? Like, that's a great little prayer just to get a screenshot of and, and take it to God in that moment when you're going to go with Psalm 139 and begin to pray. I look forward to the next few weeks. Um, it's going to be a fun time together, and I hope that we learn something. I hope that we grow together, and I hope that prayer becomes an integral part of our normal following of Jesus here at Crossroads. So let me pray, and then we'll worship. Father, we're so grateful for your heart of love that you welcome us into your presence. Lord, Truth be known, we're just a bunch of beginners, and yet you welcome beginners. And I pray as we begin to seek your face and pray that you teach us how to pray, that it would become more than just some duty or something we do out of guilt or because someone said, pray for me, but that it would become a joy and delight for us. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen.